started with 10, and then there were five photographers left, competing for a chance to win over 25,000 in cash and prizes. Today's challenge is straight out of camera. Are they up for the challenge? Let's see what they can do. I am out of my wheelhouse here. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. If I go home today, I still kill that. Today, one photographer is going home. Who will it be? Welcome to the Creator Series. Today, we're here at the Abbott in Kansas City. Competitors, today's challenge is straight out of camera using the Canon R5. At stake for the series winner, over 25,000 in cash and prizes from Canon, h and Color Lab, Background Town, and Westcott. Remember, you will have 10 minutes to complete your challenge. After you complete your challenge, you'll hand me your card and return to the lounge. Once every competitor has completed their challenge, your cards will be returned, and you will have 10 minutes to select your image and return a raw file. And finally, the challenge winner will hang in the h and Wall of Fame. Today's challenge is straight out of camera, and the winner of today's challenge will take home a 24 by 36 frame gallery wrap valued at over $300. Before we get started, for our viewers at home, we put together a little set of prizes for you. Win a free ticket to Shutterfest 24, Shutterfest Plus, our four-day photography conference, a free FJ80, FJ200, and a trigger from Westcott. Click the link below to enter, and after episode seven, one lucky winner will be selected. Now, to our competitors. Just to be in the final five is an absolute accomplishment. Every step of the way, you've been challenged and hopefully grown as a photographer. Today, we'll without a doubt test you. One thing that has come up repeatedly, details. Photoshop cannot save you today. I encourage you all to focus on the details because I promise you that's where the judges will go. Today's model is breezy. Good luck. Let's see who goes first. Who's going first? Oh, Chris Grande. Anthony's last. May the force be with you. This is gonna be a tough challenge today. We'll see what they do. All right, so let's talk about some of these backdrops from Background Town. And so Background Town being one of the sponsors, we appreciate them and they've also offered all our viewers an incredible discount. If you've been waiting, you're watching this get smaller and smaller. If you purchase any background site, why? During the week of the original broadcast, you're going to get 45% off. And also, don't forget, if you come back after the original broadcast week, uh, go to our website for the Creator Series, click the link in the description, and see if they're running any specials for you, but they're not gonna be as aggressive as the ones you're seeing now. One of the backdrops I do wanna call attention to is Annie's Lux Olive, and these kind of have that master series feel where they're not overly textured or patterned, uh, and they're just much softer, right? So me as a photographer, of course, I want to have my black, my white, my grays, but then I want to start getting into some color palettes, greens, browns, yellows, golds, if you will, to really allow myself to create timeless portraits. So take advantage of the special. If you can, 45% off. Everybody needs more backdrops in their life. Check it out. I am out of my wheelhouse here. Shooting straight out of camera, I think is not a problem. I'm, I'm good at getting the technical stuff in camera, but I am a senior photographer and our model is in underwear. So um, I'm a little out of my wheelhouse here. I think where I went wrong last episode uh, was that I didn't have a clear vision and concept. The creative juices are flowing today. I think I have a good concept in my head. Can I pull it off? We'll see. All right, Chris, what are we thinking for glass? Um, I can't mess around with, with extending backgrounds today, so I think I'm gonna do it tighter with the 85. Okay, good call. No Photoshop today, man. No Photoshop today. So what are we thinking for lighting? I know I want the Manny Ortiz beauty dish okay. on one. I think I wanna end up doing like a three light gel setup, but also have the optical spot. Okay, so walk me through that. Optical spot is our main light? No, the beauty dish is gonna be main light. I want the optical spot with the slats as a hair light to get some interest on her hair. So I'm gonna push back on you. The slats, the slots there uh -huh. are not gonna show up as a pattern on her hair. No, they're not. You won't see it. Okay. So I would either light her with that or light the background with that to make the background more interesting. Okay. But if we put one of the lenses on there, you won't see that pattern. You'll just see her lit. Okay. Uh, so I just don't want your idea to no, get lost. No, okay, yeah, 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 got it. Um, so let's do, yeah, let's do the slats as a pattern on the back. Right? Okay, that makes more because sense to me. I think I can do that. And we'll use their new 50 millimeter lens because that will uh, uh, cast that there. I think I want to do CTO on her and then fill the shadows with blue. Okay. I want a little bit of a hard light, but fill that shadows with blue. So you're uh, so it's not just black. Okay, so we'll fill the shadows with strip and then we will CTO, CTO yeah, yeah. the Manny Ortiz. Got it. I want interest. I think I'm gonna go with the background town rubble. All 
right, here we go. Here we go. Challenge number one, first victim, straight out of camera. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Turn your shoulders just a little bit back that way. A little further back, a little down. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to wrap it around a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Sure. just to get some, I, I feel like I'm losing her body a little bit. That's fair. Let's shape it. Especially because she's in all black, so. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Wherever she's looking, it looks good. One minute. That is fun. That is very devious looking. That's it? You're happy? It's in the can. 10 seconds. I just got to call it. Time. I'm unfamiliar with the optical spot that's here. I have a different optical spot and kind of projector at home. I wanted to add some window blind slats to her hair, um, but that wasn't that wasn't gonna work. So instead I chose to add the window to the background. When you're shooting out of camera, I need something that's gonna give the impact. I need the interest. I wanted to add gels. I wanted to add a textured light to the background. I need, I need something that's gonna give the punch that when the thumbnails are up on the judge's screen that they're gonna go, ooh, show me that one. And that's what I think I got. All right, so let's talk about some of the county gear that we're using here. One of my favorite all-time portrait lenses, 85 millimeter RF 1.2. This thing is a beast and it is fast, right? So if you're gonna buy a prime lens, uh, they're not cheap, nor should they be. At F1.2, this is one of the fastest pieces of glass on the market. Yes, you can go with some 1.4, 1.8s, 2.0s, but it does look different on camera. So if you want that milky portrait look and feel, obviously you're gonna have to shoot at F1.2, but if you want that milky feel, this lens, tack sharp, beautiful portraits. If you've looked at any of my work over the years, this is the one lens I use for all of my portraits. You get enough compression, it's versatile, you can move forward and backward in a relatively small space, but the optics, second to none in my opinion. All right, first victim down. All right, who's next? Who's number two? Let's go, Andre. The gun show. <laughs> Gonna try to do a lot, same, same basis, because we only get, you know, straight out of camera, no edits. I'm gonna try to shoot as many things as possible, move around a bit. I am gonna mess with some gear that I haven't used before, so the optical spot, I've never used it. So I am gonna try to incorporate that as well, incorporate some gels. I feel confident, because I'm very much so about the details, but we'll see. All right, Andre, what are we doing for glass? Uh, 7200. 7200, I like it. I'm actually gonna play with the optical spot and okay. uh, do some things there. I haven't used it before, so. All you right, know. I'll help you through it. I know you want the optical spot, spot yeah. okay, with a red gel. Is this gonna be your main light or background light? That's gonna be my main light. Okay, and then you wanted a secondary light with red gel as well. Right, that's gonna be like a strip situation, strip box, right? So we're not using it for plan A, this is for plan B. This is for, this is for plan B, I'm planning ahead. All right. I want to go with something dark, so I'm probably going to go with the, the, the fall scarlet again. Fall scarlet from background town. Okay, I like that because it's got some red tones in it, right? You ready, Andre? Yep, Let's do it, baby. Straight out of camera, details matter. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Details, Andre, let's focus on it. It's killer, dude. Time! Didn't get through as many things as I wanted to. Playing around with this optical spot, pretty cool piece of equipment. I'm happy with what I got. I think I got something really solid and I look forward to seeing what the judges think. All right, all right, number two. Who's up? Who's number three? We did a little switcheroo, so I'm on third instead of fifth. You switch. Laura and I had a little powwow. We hit a little scrap down in the parking lot, and we're like, we're good. Wow, okay. All right. 
Laura and I were just kind of chatting and I was like, man, I just want to get this over with. I feel like I just, it's a lot of waiting. I didn't want to be five. So she was like, well, I'll trade with you. And I was like, okay. So to get it over with and kind of get my concept out of my head and it just kind of worked out in my favor, hopefully. When I saw the model's outfit, I thought about like 1980s Batman, Batman Returns, Catwoman kind of vibe, but like a little bit modern. So this cat burglar, kind of Britney Spears toxic, like y'all, my friends in the back home know how I feel about Britney Spears. So I'm kind of channeling that a little bit today and I'm gonna try a couple of different things and probably two lights and we'll see how it plays out. What lens choice are we going with, Anthony? Uh, my good old workhorse 2870. Don't forget, details, details, details. And I'm gonna Expression, take lighting, slow down. Yeah. Let's talk lighting. All right, so definitely thinking two light setup. For my main light is a strip box, probably okay. the larger one, so I can make sure I can get some detail in the shadows. Because what I'd like to do yeah. is have her almost this cat burglar type pose. Okay. I think I want to have it on this camera left. Camera left. Um, and then I'm going to have my second light with a uh, reflector in a grid and a blue gel. And I'm going to have that highlight her hair. It's just to, to get a little bit of separation between her and the background. What I'm thinking too that I might need your help with, because I'm going to have her lower and we don't have a boom, I might just have you hold this a little bit low. So thinking for this backdrop, um, I want to keep things kind of dark and moody, but instead of having it run vertically, I want to have it flipped horizontally because I'd love to have it draped partially on the ground because I'm going to shoot her in a crouched position and I want that kind of sweep. So that's what I'm thinking for this one. And I think I want to roll with this Lux Copper Medium. Since this cat burglar theme is kind of happening, I wanted to kind of have a, a cool piece of jewelry that kind of pops. We might try dropping it. We might try just having it in her hand. I'm just gonna think through that while I shoot, but uh, might grab a couple different options. I would not go with trying to time the drop okay. as much as can we crop it in a way where their hand's not here, but yeah, it's we'll dangling over there. Oh, great. The timing of trying to get the drop is gonna be just absurd. Yeah. Right? You got shot for lighting, don't worry about her pose. <laughs> Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Anthony, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told everybody else, details. Get lighted in, pay attention to her eyes, her expression, her hands, her pose. You're not fixing any of that, all right? So let's get it. And then kind of like we talked about, like that little smirk, like, yeah, I'm a badass, I just took this shit, this is mine now. So that's what I would love to see. I love where you're going with the vision. For me, it's this midnight burglar. I feel like the lights are mixed up. I feel like it should be blue with a little blue with a little bit of yellow. Do you, I feel that. This I is feel your that vision. I'm just looking at it. Looking at it too, the warmth and the cool tones. I'd Does like it make sense? That. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I appreciate that. Yeah, I like that right elbow bent. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Holy shit. That was a lot. That was a lot of really paying attention, so I was great at helping me keep in mind about the details. I think it went pretty well. I was able to bring my vision to life, and kind of regardless of what happens here today, like I think this is the most authentic to me challenge that I've done, and it was a lot of fun kind of working with everybody. And once we got things dialed in, I just kind of kept firing to give myself something to look at a little bit later. And the model did fantastic, holding a really awkward pose for a really long time. All right, so let's talk about what today's challenge winner is getting. They are winning a framed gallery wrap from h, h Color Lab. Now, not all gallery wraps are created the same, or maybe I should say most of them are the same. And what's going to differentiate them for your brand is something like this. Putting a frame around it is just the final finishing touch for those canvases. Look, I've had clients for 16 years now that we sell canvas to, but it's that elevated product by adding a frame to it that really allows it to stand out from my competition. But not only that, it allows my clients to look at something like that on a wall and go, I can't get that someplace else, right? So it's one of those elevated products that you should be adding to your studio to help sell more product in studio. We've got to get our clients away from just wanting digital files. Put this as a sample product in your studio. Order this for one of your clients. Show them the quality of this product. Want a chance to win H&H's featured product today? Go down into the description, click on the link, and head over to our website. There, you'll enter to win, and every week, someone will win the featured product from H&H. All right, all right. I don't know. He's sweating. He's got beads of sweat going. That's because Sal yelled at me the entire time. All right, who's up next? 
Margo! I have Ready? a vision. You got your vision? Yeah. That's where it all starts. My vision today is to leverage the West God optical spot. I want to try one of the shapes, maybe the triangle shapes or one of the cool shapes and to, you know, start with the basic of that. And then if time permits, I want to build upon it, maybe adding a gel. And let's see if that's enough to take me to the next round. All right, wish me luck. All right, Margo, what are we doing? What's our lens? I think I want to stick with the 20. 8 to 70. 20 to 70, okay. You want to do the optical spot, right? I want to do the optical spot, but I was looking for a shape that I can make a V or a triangle. I might be able to make a triangle yeah. uh, using the slots that are in there. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. We'll try it. Okay. What's your backup? So my backup would be this one or that one. So this is more structured. This one, they're different sizes. Okay. Let me go with something more structured. Okay, so let's go try. Are you doing one light or two? I'm gonna start off with one light. I want to leverage the umbrella. Okay, I'm assuming this is the main light. That's gonna be my main light. And then you want the umbrella for what, fill or something maybe like that? Maybe fill and then maybe put a gel on it. I see where you're going. Okay, what color gel? Blue. All right, so I'll get the blue gel set up as you pick your backdrop. I want to go with Annie's Lux Navy Medium. So my vision so. is that I love her shape. I, I want to do a boudoir-esque type pose and capitalize on her necklace, her chest area, and her um, frame. So with that, I'm thinking hard hip, something like that. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. Where do you want this, her right eye or camera right eye? Camera right eye. It is looking pretty good, girl. Good job. I got it. Details, everything, expression, zoom in, pay attention to the details now. Okay, now, what's your face? Right there, Sal. This eye? Yep. Got a minute. You okay. What are we swapping? I was going to put the, the, the Ziggly. Oh, okay. 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Good job, my girl. Give me that. Okay, 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 sorry. If you do not have a Westcott optical spot in your studio or in your possession, shame on you. It was so amazing to work with. It was so much fun. My model, she was amazing. So if I go home today, I still killed that. So, Mwah. see ya. There we go. All right, Laura, you ready? Okay. Let's go do it. So I'm gonna use the optical spot and I'm gonna make this little sliver of light on the background where I want my model. And we're gonna try to make it as fashion-y and add some movement in and try to spice things up a little bit. Laura, what are we doing for glass? Uh, 50. 50 millimeter, okay. So you're doing the optical spot. What pattern are you thinking about? I'm not gonna do a pattern. I wanna use the leaves on it and make a nice little rectangle. Like you're thinking like super thin, like help me set it up. Like you. a doorway. I want like a doorway. Vertical. Yep. Okay, let's go do it. Actually, I think I want this one. All right, Fresco Cream from Background Town. So you want you want to create some kind of like box that she's being lit in? Yeah, like a nice sharp line on each side of her. Okay. I love where you're at creatively. That looks really cool, very unique. All right, so good luck. Hey Siri, set timer, 10 minutes. We're gonna start doing real high fashion and then we're gonna add some movement in, okay? What is interesting that's going on is how they're all competing with each other. But for this straight out of camera shot, they've all gravitated towards the optical spot and They've all done something a little bit different. So their images are looking really cool. I haven't been able to see the details. Obviously, we'll see that during judging. But it's really fascinating to me anyway, unless they're talking back there about what they're going to do, that they all decided to use, for the most part, the optimal spot. So let's see what they get. The time check for you, you got five minutes. Five. Oh my gosh, five more minutes. Yeah, 
there you go. There you go. Time. Great job. Great job to both of you. I think it went pretty good. This is exactly what I had in my head, so I'm glad that we were able to get the lighting the way that I wanted it, and we added some twists and some things that I wasn't really expecting to do, but I think it added to it, so I'm excited. All right, so let's talk about some of the light modifiers the contestants are using. One that keeps coming up is the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish, so come on in, I wanna show you this. And so what makes this a beauty dish versus just another softbox is we are kind of firing into this metal ring and then the light is pushing back into the modifier and filling this entire soft box or octobox with softer light that's gonna end up coming out, right? So it's not direct. Usually when you have a standard soft box, the strobe is in the middle firing and it creates a hot spot in the middle of whatever soft box it is. Something like this, this particular one being a beauty dish, the light is hitting this ring here and then filling the soft box up and diffusing it. Now for this, we are using a layer of diffusion, but you could technically shoot with this, remove the diffusion panel and just fire this. And you're gonna get a much stronger light. So that's up to you, right? That's one of the beauties of being a photographer, but this is a definitely must have item for your lighting kit. All right, all right. You know the drill, guys. This time you're only going to have 10 minutes to pick. And I'm just gonna encourage you, details matter. That is what we're looking for here. So whatever you put in front of us, we are looking for what's wrong, okay? So, good luck. Why are you yelling, Sal? I yell all the time, I'm Italian, that's what she do. I'm Italian too, and they ain't no more shit. You don't yell? Okay. All right, judges, challenge number four get it right in camera. And so the emphasis this morning when I gave them their challenge, I said, we are now on challenge number four. You have heard from the judges on repeat about the details uh, and how they matter. So is there a story or not a story? Is it a portrait? You know, is the hair right? Is the expression right? Are they looking away? So I put pressure on them and re-emphasized it before every single one of them shot. And it never matters more than in this challenge because yes. there's no editing. And for everyone watching, these are raw files that we are looking at. So these are CR3 files that have not been uh, manipulated. So, all right, let's go. First image. Please, the go go. Good for them. Is that one gelled as well, or is it just cool? This particular one, as you're looking at it, it's both gelled, a just of Kelvin on the camera. This was actually a three light setup. So when it started, I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> You're gonna be able to pull this off. So they used the uh, Westcott optical spot. They adjusted the color temperature on camera to 3200, gelled it, uh, and then filled in some of the shadows. So they really tried to focus on the overall exposure of the image. Look at the second image. That's interesting. Same thing, two gel set up here, red and a blue filling in the shadows. They're paying attention to details way more now. Yeah, they really are. We're all photographers, and I know sometimes I get a little lazy thinking I'm gonna do something in uh, Photoshop. And there's there's a place for Photoshop, but for the challenge, we want you to be as close to perfect as You want us to finish the photo, but yeah. interesting. Okay. All right, somebody broke away from the standing up post. Yeah, and a story, right? So the story was, she's a thief, right? And that's something else worth noting. They have no idea prior what the model's going to be wearing. Uh, so they, they have from the time they are told the challenge and see that model to come up with their own concepts. And so here, she's a jewelry thief. Mm -hmm. I like the mixed lighting use. I like it. They're totally taking up their game. So we should definitely be proud of them for we are proud. stepping up their this game. Is great. Wow. Right? Oh. Wow. Oh, Lord. It's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Now, what is interesting, of our five contestants, four decided to use the Westcott optical spot, which was fascinating to me to watch because everything's broken down on set. So when they come out, we ask them, hey, what lighting are you thinking of using? Four to five went to that, and I'm like, are you guys talking in the back? Like, what, what's, what's going on? But they all presented it quite differently. Oh, stop it. Right? Oh, no. Stop it. <laughs> I'm gonna struggle. <laughs> this is like out of camera. Oh, gosh. Straight out of camera. Dude, I'm oh. that's an exciting challenge. Yes. Maybe the whole series should be straight out oh, of camera. Man. It's just like, this is next level, bro. They put the triangle in there. The triangle with... On the spot. I'm a big composition guy. We're in the left third. Right, so we've got all these angles. They opted not to be dead center with that. And I don't it's mind badass. it. Right. I don't mind it. No, because that left angle takes us to the bottom left of the frame, and then we've got these angles in her arms, in her hands, in her Such fingers. Such a clean shadow. And her left elbow points you in this direction, so there's some space for the yeah, other side yeah. of the frame. If this was straight up, there would be too much negative space. Exactly. Here. I like how they filled it, but are their shadow's still so clean. And you can see the definition in the blacks. Mm -hmm. 
it's really good. It's, this is incredible. Yeah, this is, I'm very, very proud of them for sure. So we got our work cut out for it. There's not a single photo that I'm like, this is the one we have to yeah. pull out. Honestly, but I think it, this it, might be the one. The lighting is fuzzier than the rest. This particular one, yeah. as far as the person going home. Why don't we start with what I'm hoping is the easiest for me. I don't know where you guys are at. Yeah, There's, that's the one. This is the strongest image of the group by far. There's two great. strong ones. So let's go back one. I right that one too. That one's okay for and me. And especially with that little gap of light in the shadow, just kind of cleans it all up. I don't like the gap of light. I, I'm with you, Tara. Right, I don't like it. That it gap looks messy. actually, it bothers me. It looks accidental because it's pulls, just her ear. It pulls me away. But there is this balance of stripes of light balance here. And then on the other side of her body, there's a little bit of that as well going on. It just balances the stripes of light. But come on. But then that's, that's willfully balanced. That's, no, the other is, one was accidental. This, this is was on purpose. Too. I'm not debating this is good out of camera. No, no, for there's sure. no doubt about it. This is... No, 100%. Okay. This, this is the winner. So let's get the easy part out of the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is an easy I think one. We're in complete agreement And this is going to be the very hard one. Who are we sending home? because they all did a great job. Yeah. I feel like that's like a cool superhero situation. And then she looks like a glamour model at the end. It's like that posing doesn't go with the whole lighting. I do have a problem with the lighting on the face. I, I do don't, too. it's not controlled. Yeah. It just feels like light leak in this area if I'm being nitpicky. Well, let's look at the in intent. Intent was hero lighting. Yeah. And then the pose is not hero pose. Yeah. It is. It's sexy. It's sexy glamour pose. Right. That, that's a that's a miss in right. my opinion. Okay, here you have some color grading going on on camera. Pretty cool. Well done. This was a blue fill gel okay. and a red gel red across, gel. Okay, across the, the eyes. You know, even though this is a great shot, it doesn't make me scream. Um, no. It's cool. It's too much darkness. I, I wish there was a little more detail in the shadows. Half a stop up. Half a stop. And I think it would have been a little nicer to have that shadow detail in the clothing. It would have taken it up a notch for me. This is a tough one. I like the way they filled with the blue because on this like particular necklace, you're seeing those specular highlights I do like that, that are being caught yeah. and driving us around the frame. I feel like personally, if we had lifted these shadows even more, you almost lose the mood, I think. It's nice. Level. It may or may not be the weakest one for me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually sad because it's I'm awesome. debating it too. It's a great image. <laughs> I'm know? debating it too. This person cannot go home considering they did a story. Right. This one to me is safe. See, now that's interesting because I'm kind of the opposite. To me, this is stronger than this. And let me tell you why. There is a story, and I think we're bumping it up, or at least from your perspective, you're bumping it up because it's a story. What I'm getting stuck in is the lack of depth of field. Mm. It's clipping the nose and this messiness in the in the foreground. I just, right, there's something wrong with all of them, but I feel like this might be stronger than this personally. Do we agree this one's safe? Yeah, I mean, I like that one. Okay, so let me move this. I was gonna put that in my bottom, actually. This yeah. is gonna be, uh, okay, so yeah. I won't move it. This is gonna be uh, a, a good discussion <laughs> because it's gonna be very hard. Are there any of these last four that we can agree is safe to help us? Well, this is safe. I agree that's safe. So two to one, Taylor, you're getting, is, over, is that what's happening? It's, an, it's an override. It's an override. That one has a posing issue. It, 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 it doesn't work with the expression and the lighting. This one is really well executed, but it's just too much black. And then this one has a story, but there's such heavy light spill and not a lot of depth to kind of play off of. But the fact that there's a story of the thief is pretty awesome to me, and it brings it up another notch. Okay? Gosh. This is really hard, man. This is really like, hard. If I have to pick one to go home. Show me where you're at. I'd pick that one. That's where I'd be at. The, the light to me is just the muddiest. I would choose this one to go home. I think the lighting here is just cleaner. One this to has me to go is home just because muddy. Because this one has no lighting on the hair. It's just pure black. But that's where the intent. But that's the, that's that's the, the story because her body's intent. black. But it's out of camera, right? Like at least this has hair light. Like look at that. There is detail there. This is just pure black. There is more technical capabilities there than in the middle. You know what? You're right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's just more going on here. There's more. I understand. And I agree. You're changing okay. your vote. I'm changing my vote. I'm just not agreeing with you guys. You no, know, I know. You have your vote. There is no shadow detail there, but I think that is by design. You may not like it, but I feel like that's what they were trying to create. Whereas in here, I feel like the lighting on the face is just lost. So great. They have lighting everywhere and it's a, it's a well-lit image. But here, I feel like I'm looking exactly where the maker wants me to look at her eyes. If there would have been even a smallest hint of a hair light here, I would have been like, boom. 
like this has shadow detail, not a lot, but it has some, and it has hair detail. And the lighting on the face is not perfect, but at least there's intent for superhero lighting. At this stage of the competition, it is tough for everybody. All of them have done an incredible job, but at the end of the day, somebody's gotta go home. Right. Too bad. Tough one. It's too bad. All right, let's send it to print. Woo. Creators, challenge number four, not an easy one. I will start off by saying judges were absolutely impressed by everybody's work, but at the end of the day, somebody has to go home today, unfortunately. So before we get started, I want to introduce my fellow judges. To my left is Taylor Brumfield, Westcott Top Pro, Tamron Ambassador, and a commercial product and beauty photographer. To my right is Roberto Valenzuela, Canon Explorer of Light, best-selling author, and a fashion commercial photographer. Went with the eyebrows today? Yeah. Okay, very nice, very nice. You never know, he doesn't tell us pre-show what his moves are gonna be. Uh, we've just heard rumors that he goes home and he practices in the mirror before each episode. All right, as you know, today's challenge winner will win a 24 by 36 framed gallery wrap from H&H, &H, valued over $300. And again, before we get going here, this was not an easy decision. It was a very, I don't wanna say heated, but a very uh, vigorous- uh, Energetic. Energetic yes. uh, debate trying to figure out who, unfortunately, is going home today. So let's get our winner first. Congratulations. Laura, just an absolutely stunning image. Having worked on this with you, I hope you don't take offense to me saying we haphazardly stumbled across this, right? Yeah. That was absolutely incredible. As you came out, you knew you wanted to work with the optical spot, but we didn't really kind of know what we we're gonna do. We turned it on and this pattern presented itself and then you were just off to the races uh, and just an absolutely uh, stunning image. And refresh my memory, is this one that we gelled the shadows on or yeah. is this, okay. This was one of my very last shots. Yeah, I wanna weigh in on this image. It's not just the triangle pattern that's lighting the back of the wall that did it. Everybody did really well lighting. This just was next level. It's the composition. It's in the bottom left-hand corner, giving us some breathing room out to the right. That was huge. You didn't go bullseye with it, right? Then that left elbow being bent the way it is, is driving us out of the frame. Just an absolutely stunning image. We were all speechless when it came up and it was better than I saw on the back of camera. So seriously, incredible job. Kudos, congratulations, Laura, your journey continues. Next image. Margo. Margo, maybe you found a new calling because uh, Photoshop you are not very good at. No, not at all. So maybe you got to stick with straight out of camera, girl, because this was absolutely stunning. Yeah, Margo, amazing job. This has a mood and a feeling, and I love the framing of the face. You have two arms framing. You could have done it with one arm frame and one arm on the hip, which would have weakened it. But because you have two arms framing, it brings you to the face. And what did you do to the face? You put the cool graphic element on the face. That's good thinking and that's why you're here. Great job. Thank you. This would read to me as a beauty image and in the beauty world, we focus on cleanliness of light on both the foreground and the background. And so that little pop of light that's coming through by her lower arm, that really just drew my eye and distracted me. Obviously that would be something that I personally would clean up and post. That's not something you were afforded in this challenge. So I understand, but at the same time at this level, it's something that drew me away from the cool graphic on the face. And it's unfortunate because you did focus on the face and then immediately I'm drawn down to that pop of light, which was not to me on purpose because you can see the shadow of her ear and her neck. And then I would have just had a little bit more fill because she did have that cool, slightly sheer overgarment on, but we really like the specular highlights on the gloves just for a little bit of texture on her necklace. I can appreciate that as well as the color grading here, but again, just that little pop of light really frustrated me. One of the things that led to this, again, debate between us was, my thing is, I put my hand over it, right, and just kind of closed one eye, right, to hide that out, and if you do that on the screen, I felt like the image would be stronger without that highlight than when I removed my hand and saw the highlight. But these are the types of things that as creatives we get to do, right? There's no technically right or wrong answer here. It's just interpretive at this point. So Roberto actually enjoyed that. He felt like that helped balance the image, whereas Taylor and I felt like that detracted from it. Anyway, I wanted to explain that to you yeah. so you understood and everybody watching that that makes sense. Uh, and we'll come to our own conclusions. But Margo, congratulations, your journey continues. 
Next image up. Anthony. Congratulations, well done. Roberto felt strongly about this image and I felt a little bit more negative about this image. So Anthony, awesome job, man. I think the first thing we all noticed was that there was an element of storytelling here. So you didn't just do the standing up person and you light her up and you use some trick, whatever. You actually thought story first, execution of the photo later. And she's a thief. She just got out of the danger zone. She's now in the safe zone and she's showing what she stole and now she's happy. Or there's that smirk on her face, which I thought went perfectly with the story. The lighting on her face by no means was perfect, but the accent light makes it look like she's about to exit a tunnel where she's from. Does that make sense? Like outside light coming through. The fact that she was on the floor instead of just standing, I just thought that was another element of complexity that you added that was really cool. Overall, the pose was cool, the idea was there, the story was there, the lighting was there, and execution wasn't perfect, but it was like getting there. So nice job. Obviously I was there, we worked on this. You spent a lot of time on details and I will give that to you, but one of the details that got lost, I felt like that control of light on her nose got missed and then the backdrop those wrinkles, right, or just, they're too prominent for me, which is a depth of field issue. Obviously, we go into post-production, we throw it into Photoshop, we can remove all that stuff, but that's not the challenge. And so that detracted from the image, but I agree with Roberto, and I think ultimately Taylor did as well, feeling like she's about to escape in the different colors and lights, and the story is what really elevated this image. So congratulations, Anthony, your journey continues. Thank you, guys. All right, next image. Chris, congratulations. I cannot even explain to you the debate that went back and forth on this. Chris, I'm just gonna be transparent with you. I was ready to send you home. Nothing personal, somebody had to go home today. From my perspective, you opted for a very complicated lighting setup. We had the gobo in the background, we had fill light, and we had a main light on her. Where I felt like this really, really fell flat was in the light on her face. I did not feel it was at the level it needed to be at. We're shaping her face, but the light on her face was just uneven, especially her left eye. So the control of that light on her left eye, I just felt like was lost, right? And that's just because we're not looking at the details. Again, I've emphasized this, going to Photoshop, you probably clean some of that up, but that was not the task at hand. And so that for me was part of our vigorous debate going back and forth. Andre, I wanted you to stay. I wanted this image to stay. I felt like it was a really strong image. I'm gonna let Roberto and Taylor explain what led them to their decision. Strong image. I thought it was very creative with the red light and the cool shadows. Felt very Marvel-like, but in fairness to Roberto and Taylor, it fell short in other areas. So I'm gonna let them explain it. Andrew, my brother. Oh man, oh man, that, that was so hard. That was so hard. Here's what happened. Separation between background and subject, no separation, not even with an accent light. Man, I was just hoping there would be an accent light. I'm talking a small one on the shoulder to separate her from the background. The other side. Because of that, if you close your eyes and you look at it, it becomes 80% blackness from the chin down. And then you're saying that's the point because I'm trying to focus on the red. Sure, but an accent light would have showed her figure without distracting from that goal that you had. Second, no hair light on a person that has black hair. It becomes a block of ink when you were to print this. Black hair has to be lit. You can do a small amount just because it's uh, out of camera, but there was none. So when this one has hair light on the, on the ponytail, you see it? Uh -huh. This one has separation. This one had the wrong pose for the face. He did hero lighting on the face, but then the pose looks like a fashion model. That was a total miss. You nailed your pose actually, but there was no accent light. There was no way to figure out the, the, the separation between the subject and the back. An accent light, a kicker, it would have been all over. <laughs> Darn it, man. This one was rough. <laughs> this one was really, really rough. We debated a good long time um, and going back and forth. What ultimately did it for me uh, was honestly just exposure because that's something that most people tend to do in post. I personally tend to underexpose, and so this would have been a challenge for me too. So that's what did it for me, is she's in all black, she has the dark makeup, she has the jet black hair. I wanted to see some, some proper exposure. I would have liked to see just maybe quarter stop, half stop of fill, just a little bit of something, 
to show the texture in her garments because she had a sheer garment, an opaque garment underneath, and then the dimensionality of her, her very 3D looking necklace, as well as again, her hair. I shoot a lot of people of color. Getting the hair light is something that's very important for me and something that I do end up looking for. And that's why it tipped me over the edge into the other direction. Chris, congratulations. Your journey oh, continues. <laughs> Andre, man, no. Andre. You're an incredible photographer. You already know this. Your journey has just begun in so many ways here. You had an incredible run here on the Creator Series, and I look forward to all the amazing things you're gonna do in the future. Thank you for being here. Everybody watching at home, this was a tough one, so let us know. Go down to the link in the description, click and go to the Creator Series website and let us know who you think should have won from this challenge, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. All right, creators, there's four of you left. The bar has been set. You understand what we are looking for at this point from judges. There's only three challenges left before we pick our winner. And so I'm going to encourage you to start paying attention to these details that have been pinpointed in every single challenge, okay? And so we are now getting incredibly nitpicky on what we're looking for. Why? Because whoever walks out of here is going to be the winner and get all that publicity and win all those prizes and so we have to feel comfortable that the person we select is in fact the winner of Creator Series Season 2, okay? So good luck in your next challenge, but the bar has been set by you. So here we go. I look forward to what you create next. Love it, baby. Oh, good guys. <laughs> Thanks, Bye, Lisa. Baby. It's like a roller coaster in here, like all the time. You're down, you're up. You're down, you're up. I was really excited when I got into Lightroom and I saw that image. It was actually one of the very last ones that I shot, but as soon as I saw it, I knew. I knew that it was the one I had to choose and I'm so glad that I did and I'm excited for the next challenge. That's the way the cookie crumbles, guys. Mr. Mark today. I'm happy to be here. You know, if you know me, you know I love competition. I love to, you know, be challenged and this was definitely a challenge. So I appreciate being here and uh, I look forward to seeing who wins.